Welcome to Everyone's a Millionaire podcast where we explore the journeys, strategies, and insights of those who've hit it big. Today, let's dive right into the best tips from our guest, Dylan. What's your biggest financial mistake or setback and how did you recover from it? Oh, I, I almost hate saying this because I don't want my partnerships to feel like um, they're not appreciated or, or whatever. I did a lot of partnerships early on, which is fine. Totally fine. Looking back, like, or, or maybe where I'm at now is I value partnerships uh, or my appetite for partnerships is a lot less. So early on, I did what I had to do to get a deal done, which is fine. Um, I don't regret those partnerships, don't regret those people at all. But I wouldn't do deals now the same way I did three years ago because I have more tools in my belt. You could say I have more money now to take down deals, but really I just, I'm smarter now than I was three years ago. I know how to take down a deal without giving away equity. So I didn't lose any money, but I left a lot of equity or cash flow on the table, you know, in those moments on some of those deals. Um, I don't know if it's a regret, man, because, you know, I'm, I'm where I'm at now, but, uh, you know, just, I don't know if you kind of had similar scenarios with, with partnerships or just understanding that dynamic, but you change over time as an investor and how you want to buy things. Yeah. So, so you would say just really choosing your partnerships wisely. Or choosing yeah. how I take down the deals. Maybe I wouldn't have done partnerships at all at that time. Okay. Sure. Um, I would say that. But, you know, shiny object syndrome too. I would say this is one of the mistakes maybe I made is, you know, it's so many ways to make money in real estate, which you know as well. But like when you're in a small town, you don't have only multifamily to focus on. So you kind of have to be okay with what crumbs across your plate as long as you're buying good deals. So I bought a resort last year and it's been a great deal. I love it. But a resort is short term and short to be a good short term rental owner is a very different skill set than to be a good multifamily operator. Right. And I don't regret the resort, but it has been a ton of legwork. It's taken a ton of time off of my focus from like going to buy other things. So I think just looking back, I should have focused in a little more on what I would want to do. And I really I mean saying that to myself now because I should still do it now. But just really focusing in on one asset strategy, you know, I think that will help a lot of people out in the long run. No, that makes perfect sense. Tell me a little bit more about the resort. Man, it's, it's stupid. I, I had a house lead on a house that was across the street from this resort. And I was kind of looking on my deal machine app, you know, and I clicked across the street at this property and I saw it was a big resort and it only sold a year prior, or two years prior in like 2020, 2019, but it sold at a super low price, like 140, 150. And I could tell what just from Google Maps. Like, I don't huh? mean to interrupt you. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I'm so just good. so curious. What do you mean by resort? Like uh, lake resort. resort. So I live by two lakes. So it's okay. it's a uh, it's a lake resort right up from the lake. Okay. It doesn't have so a dock or anything. Property then? No, you you can see the lake, but it's not on the lake. Okay, that's just how sure. our lakes are set up. But it's got sure. cabins, it's got motel units, and it's got two houses. It's 14 units. Okay. Um. So anyway, I, I saw this thing. It sold for a really low price, and you can call it luck, whatever you can call it fate. But I called the owner of it and I was like, Hey, do you want to sell? It was just a general out of the blue cold call. And she happened to say, yes, we actually do want to sell. So I went there the next day. I met with them, talked to the whole resort and a month later or three weeks later, we had a contract. So, you know, I, I, I think when I bought that resort, just to kind of give you some, some bragging rights here, I guess she had made like 86, 87,000 on that resort, uh, in 2022. And I bought it in May of 23. And from May to December, I grossed 111,000. So I increased the income substantially and with less months. So I think this year will be more around 120, 130. Uh, and the resort's probably worth seven, 800, maybe 900 now. And I've put about 120 into it. So yeah, I mean, it's been a lot of legwork though. It's, it's not been, uh, it hasn't come easy. That's for sure. Yeah, I have, I'm sure, I'm sure. Awesome, man. Very cool. Very, very yeah. cool.